Welcome back. In a recent article written by Izzy Ramirez and Sean Collins, Vox Future Perfect examined the issue of racial bias as part of a broader discussion on racism. The article highlights the pervasive discrimination black people face in America throughout different aspects of their lives. Izzy Ramirez, deputy editor of Vox Future Perfect, joins me now to discuss the article. Izzy, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. Now, what was the inspiration behind exploring anti-black racism and discrimination in the way, um, in the way it looks for black people in America. Right, so Vox had this awesome collaboration with an all-black newsroom, Capital B, and we really were looking at, you know, a lot of follow-up from what has happened with George Floyd. All of these discussions have been mounting for so long, and we really wanted to look at all of the different facets of discrimination, um, whether it's health discrimination, monetary discrimination, all of these sorts of different um, ways that discrimination can impact your life. And that was kind of like the, the impetus behind it. But uh, for our piece specifically, um, we'd been in touch with uh, researchers at the University of Chicago, and they had accrued like this insane body of work, like, fifth, like about 50 years of studies, uh, around like 40 plus studies, that looked at all the different ways that discrimination is really pervasive um, for black communities. And we, you know, dug through and wrote the piece. Now, I'm really glad that you mentioned that there was so much study that goes behind it, because in the article you talked about uh, how it's a challenge to call out discrimination and how it's sometimes hard to prove. Can you expand on that idea and how finding this research helped, you know, with writing this article? Yeah, so like the big thing that we really wanted to focus on is, you know, discrimination is hard to prove in the sense that you never really know what's in someone else's brain when it happens to you. Like, let's say, you know, you're up for a promotion and you didn't get it. Like, you, like it's kind of hard to say, like, oh, it's discrimination, right? Mm -hmm. Unless it's like obviously very blatant, like aggressively in your face, which, right. you know, not very fun. And, you know, black and brown folks, like we, this is something that we know deeply, like intrinsically, but there's like the benefit of having like the the evidence since there's oddly this debate about whether or not it is discrimination which i find really fascinating mm -hmm. where like most academics were like no like this is like we have all of these studies like it's proven time and time again like whether it's through correspondence studies or different types of um of, of study work um but that was kind of the big thing about the piece was just like discrimination can be hidden um, and a lot of the folks that I spoke to for it were just like, you know, sharing their stories with me. They were, like, I talked to maybe like 16 folks. Um, not, not everyone made it into the piece, but they were just like, you know, I, I will never know. And it like is driving me up the wall that I will never know. Right. Yeah. Now, I really want to touch on the fact that you mentioned George Floyd earlier. I was very surprised that even after George Floyd, there were people that were still maybe in denial about the presence of discrimination. It seemed like after that moment happened in in our history, like we were moving forward or like people were starting to understand. Can you just talk about that moment when you realize like there are people who still don't believe that this is really happening? Yeah. So a lot of it can be um, in certain like either academic circles, policy circles where like there is a lot of, you know, what they like to call confounding factors. Like, oh, like, can we really say it's anti-black discrimination? What if it's income? What if it's geography? What if it's X, Y, Z? And all of these studies, like they were conducted in like all sorts of parts of America, right? Like there was one study that even used like cell phone pings for like uh, to, to look at uh, voting and like how long it would take for um, folks to vote depending on where you live, if it was like an all black community, et cetera. And like they found that no, like if you're living in a predominantly black area, like you will be waiting longer to vote. And the piece is really about time, right? Like that was kind of the like the 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 thing that we really want to focus on because like a lot of folks will like mention like income or you know all these other facets and time is really hidden it's insidious like the time that you lose because of like a 15 minute weight loss or a like someone you know wasting your time in other arenas like at a restaurant um, you know, that's less time with your family. That's less time, you know, for work. That's less time right. doing the things that you care about. And that like adds up considering that like black folks have, um, a 
like less life expectancy than white folks. Right. And I like that you mentioned that. I thought it was a very interesting way uh, to address this because we've seen so many articles talking about racism and discrimination, but I've never seen it uh, kind of highlighted in this way in regard to time. Now, we've done segments exploring racism and discrimination in healthcare, home buying. Uh, can you talk about how you know, this plays out in much smaller everyday situations, such as like getting an Uber or like you mentioned, just waiting in line. Can you expand yeah. on that a little bit more? That was like the thing that we really like, Sean and I really wanted to hone in on. Cause like you've probably seen those like viral studies where it's like, okay, like if, you know, you were going to get your house appraised for like a mortgage and you were to like swap out the photos in your house from like a black family to a white family, same exact house, just different pictures, your house would get appraised more, right? Mm -hmm. And like, so we'd seen these pieces and we're like, okay, what can we add to the conversation that hasn't really been addressed um, that much before. And so we really wanted to focus in on smaller acts of discrimination. That's not to say that like the impact isn't, you know, right. negative or as harmful, but you know, just like these little moments where like, as you said, like the Uber voting lines, um, there were some studies around like whether or not someone will help you cross the street which, you know, that's, right. you know, a blink, like seven blinks, right? Like not a lot of time, but like over the course of your life, those little things are cumulative. And that's kind of what we wanted to address in the piece, like things that like you might brush aside. Um, you know, one of the sources that we spoke to was just like, there's a defense mechanism. Like, you know, you can't spend all of your energy right. worrying about it because you'll, you'll drive yourself up the wall. Right. Um, but at the same time, like you are losing like time in your life. Right. I, I love that you mentioned that because sometimes I'll go to the doctor and I'm like, this is taking way too long. Like, you know, <laughs> I'm like, I'm just here to get my teeth cleaned. And like if my appointment's at 3.30, I'm not getting seen until 5.30. And, I, you know, like you mentioned, you don't want to say like, is it because of the area that I live in? Is it because everybody, you know, tends to look a certain way? But I mean, it's really great that there is like research to support this. Can you talk a little bit more about the research that was conducted that provided proof that people weren't it just wasn't in their head like yeah. they actually are experiencing what they think they're experiencing yeah so the folks that you see were incredible um you know they'd actually been in contact with the box for like i think a year um you know sending us all of these like data and um sean was really like the big brain like a calculus guy um when it came to like sifting through the studies but like what we were looking at was just very much like you know what can we tell via charts what can we you know support through our like anecdotes and the story of the folks that we talked to and you know what are like some of the most like surprising studies um because again like there's like the resume study where you know like if you have like the same um these are called correspondence studies right like you have like the same exact resume, but like the names are different right. and you look at response rates. Um, there are some studies that we looked at um, that were specific for finding housing, which like the rental market one I thought was really interesting. Cause again, like most folks see stuff for like buying houses, mm -hmm. um, but we're in New York city. I don't know who owns a house. Right. <laughs> so like, you know, rental market stuff, there was um, some stuff around, I'm trying to remember. Um, you know, whether or not a professor um, would email you back or like fast enough if you were a prospective PhD student. So if you don't know, like in order to like get into a PhD program, you kind of have to like link up with like a professor who would kind of take you under your wing. But that's something that not a lot of folks know to do. Right. And so like the fact that like if you're trying to like get into a PhD program, again, like if you think about it, that's like income, that's a life change, that's generational wealth. Will professor respond to you right. in time, right? So um, that was kind of the studies that we were looking at. Um, and obviously, like, you can't really compare apples to oranges. They're all conducted in different ways, mm -hmm. different sample sizes. But um, we really enjoyed, like, um, you know, having such a trove to look at because that can be really hard to have access to such like high quality data. Now, you mentioned New York City, and that, that got me thinking. I know a lot of times people feel so grateful to live in New York City because there's so many different types of people here, um, and you feel as though, like, okay, well, you know, at least I'm not experiencing maybe racism that someone in maybe another area that isn't as diverse is experiencing. Uh, but is it still here? Like, you know, you know, should people still feel like, okay, just because it's New York City doesn't mean that you're not experiencing these things? Yeah, and I mean, like, we didn't get into this too much in the piece just because the studies were, um, you know, across the nation. Right. But yeah, I would say that, you know, discrimination is insidious. Like, 
like I don't know how much you can keep your eye out um, just because again like it is hard to know right. but um, you know I think it is something to like think about like as you're conducting your own life and like advocating for other people like um, you know a woman that I spoke to Keisha or um, she's the the lead of of the piece you know she was one of these women who were like at the front lines at like in wall street like you know breaking barriers and she had to advocate for a young man who um you know who she thought was the best candidate by far um but you know at the time like hiring managers were like well you know he's he's he doesn't have a, a degree yet so we can't give him the job but the job didn't require a degree so she like really put herself out in line and it was exhausting for her it was really really exhausting and she worried about him a lot even after he was hired um but the man went on to have like an excellent career and i mean i think that's all that we can really do is just like you know support one another um and keep an eye out for um for these moments now, I want to talk about, because we talked about the time in the article, you t use the term artific artificially short. Uh, we have about a minute left. Can you just quickly tell us, like, what that means and, you know, how that was the theme of this entire article? Yeah, I mean, like, if you look at the data, like, the, the time that we have on Earth, like... <laughs> is not that long, but it's even shorter for black and brown folks um, because of the intergenerational like trauma and racism and discrimination that we've experienced, right? And like it continues to happen, but it doesn't like it doesn't need to. like we, like we don't need to be doing this. Right. Uh, it is artificially short in the sense that this is all stuff that is preventable. We can do something about it. We don't need to be making life worse for other people for reasons that, are very dumb and like not helpful for anyone. So I think that's kind of like the sentiment of the piece is like, we're losing time. It hurts individuals, but also hurts society. Like we're losing out on so many great ideas, so many great people and experiences because we're just wasting time. Right, well, I totally appreciate you coming here and having this conversation. Like I said, I've never seen you know, racism be uh, viewed at or ex uh, explored in this type of way. I thought it was very new. Um, and it was just like really interesting to read and to be like, you know, I think I, I think I know what you're talking about here. Uh, so I appreciate you taking the time to come with us and talk about this. Well, thank you for having me. Of course. If you would like to read the article that Izzy and Sean wrote, please go to www.vox.com. We have to take a quick break, but we'll be back with more open right after this.